Hey, welcome back to the 3D Printing Nerd Print Farm. There's been some updates to stuff we've done, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover that just you know a little bit later. But right now, I really wanted to talk about print farm efficiency and how to go about calculating how to print a job. And the reason I bring that up is because I'm talking about our project in collaboration and partnership with SparkFun Electronics and printing the XRP kit. It's been crazy because the initial order was for 10,000 XRP kits and each kit has eight printed parts. So that's 80,000 3D printed parts for this order. So how did we do this efficiently? Okay, to start, all calculations that I'm gonna give you are based on the 50 Prusa 3D printers that we allocated from the farm for this job. And like I said, 80,000 printed parts, 10,000 kits, eight parts per kit. And the idea was 5,000 kits in the beginning, take a small break to see if we needed to course correct anywhere, and then the rest of the 5,000. Good play. And the parts that we had to print, we're gonna go over them right now because there's the battery clip, small, flat, easy to print. There's the chassis, that's the main part of the XRP kit and that's the one that takes the longest to print. There's the lifting hook, it goes in the back and it's small, flat, easy to print. The line sensor, it's small. There's also not a lot of surface area contacting the build plate. So we have to take that into consideration. The servo mount, small, flat, but has geometry extending that doesn't have a lot of contact with the build plate. So again, we just have to take that into consideration. Then there's the ultrasonic mount. I would call that mid-size. It's chonky, it's thick. It's got okay surface area contacting the build plate. But again, I just, you know, you worry about things when you automate things. And so we just wanna take that into consideration. Uh, and finally, there's the wheel. There's two of those per kit and they are, well, they're small. They're very flat. They don't take long to print. Super easy on those ones. So originally, uh, when we did this, uh, we, we didn't have any order to what was on the build plate. Uh, some plates had 10 parts, some had 18 parts, some had 20 parts. It was just, it was me adding things in the slicer to what I thought at the time would work in order for us to get as many parts as possible. I didn't throw any math at this. Nope. And then all parts were hand counted. And then once counted was placed into bags, uh, but then before shipping, those bags would be double checked by a human. It made sense in the slicer at the time that I was doing this because I've sliced lots of things. It made sense. But this process made it possible for human error to be introduced a number of times. And when you have humans double checking humans, there's just a chance for human introduced error and I, and I wanted to take that out of the equation. So what we thought about, print for the packaging. Uh, this is probably something that other print farm operators have known for years, but again, in, in my experience, we're still learning some things and so printing for the packaging, ah, it was my light bulb moment. So kits are shipped at 50 per box. And there's, so there's 50 chassis in every box. And then there's 50 of all the other parts that are in Ziploc bags. There's two bags of wheels. So we still do 50 wheels per bag, but there's two bags of wheels because there's two wheels on every kit. And I thought we're gonna let the machines do the counting. And so that meant changing the layout of what we did on the build plates. And so here's what I ended up with. So for the battery clips, there's 10 per plate, and those 10 are gonna take one hour and 11 minutes. Cool. There's one chassis per plate, it's the largest part, and that chassis takes five hours and three minutes to print. 25 lifting hooks, and even three hours. 25 line sensors, that's three hours and 53 minutes. 25 servo mounts, three hours, 29 minutes. 25 ultrasonic mounts, 10 hours and seven minutes. That's a longer one. And finally, 10 wheels per build plate takes two hours and 13 minutes. So with build plate layouts now known and good, it's really easy for us to calculate how many build plates are needed per shipment. And we can also target that number against the 50 Prusa 3D printers we've allocated from the print farm for this project. 
And for these calculations I'm about to give you, we are assuming no errors. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Also, assuming for this, all 50 Print Farm 3D printers are allocated to that job. So we have 50 allocated to the total job, but for the part breakdown I'm gonna give you, all 50 are gonna be printing that part. Also for insurance, we are utilizing Vision Miner's nanopolymer adhesive. And that's not to say we don't get great adhesion on the smooth PEI build plates that all the machines are running. However, build plate adhesion helpers are never a bad thing. I've used nanopolymer adhesive for years. It works great in my experience. This is not a paid spot. I'm just telling you right now, if you have a farm job and you're printing thousands and thousands of parts, it never hurts to have a little bit of insurance on parts not lifting on those build plates that you're running day in and day out. That's what we use. So now we can go through the parts and I'm gonna start with the chassis because it's the longest one and it takes the longest to print. And so we get that one ready for packaging first. And I can do 50 chassis prints every five hours, three minutes, which gives me 150 chassis parts in a day. That's great because if we're running a seven day week, then that gives us over a thousand chassis prints for a shipment. That means the chassis for the shipment, every thousand is done. Now, if there's urgency needed or there's an emergency at hand, we can run 24 seven. So the schedule I'm giving you allows humans to sleep. We need that. But if for some reason there's an urgency involved, what we can do is break a, a week down into 168 total hours. And if we run 24 seven, then we can allocate and print 1,700 chassis in a seven day week. Uh, and now again, that's going crazy. And so that's possible and that's possible with other parts, but I'd rather not run in an emergency situation and I'd rather not have that urgency. I like to sleep and so do the people that work here on the farm. So 1,050 in a seven day week, doing 150 a day, that's great. That's pretty good. For the build plates, I've arranged parts either 10 per plate or 25 per plate because if we're shipping 50 in a box, 10 and 25 both divide into 50 super duper easily. So again, for the, for the plates that have 10 on them, the battery clips, that means if I'm utilizing all 50 allocated 3D printers, I've got 500 of those every 1.25 hours. And that means I can get the needed 1000 for a shipment in under three hours. It takes me less than half of a shift in order to get all 1000 battery clips for a shipment. How cool is that? For the wheels, it's gonna give me 500 every 2.25 hours, again with 10 per build plate. And that means I can get the needed 2,000, remember, two bags of 50 per shipment. So there's 2,000 needed and I can get those done in a, in a day. It's gonna be greater than eight hours, but in a full day, I can get all of the wheels needed for a shipment of 1,000 kits. Now for the parts that I can do 25 per build plate at a time, that running all 50 allocated machines means once their job is done, I get 1,250 parts. That's great. That means one job gives me more than enough for a 1,000 kit shipment and it allows me to have some for the next shipment. It works out really, really well. So of those, the lifting hooks, that means I get 1,250 of those in three hours. For the line sensors, I get that many in three hours, 53 minutes. Servo mounts, three hours, 29 minutes. And the ultrasonic mounts, 10 hours, seven minutes. For the ones that are just three hours or a little bit more, obviously those can be done in a day or multiples in a day. For the ultrasonic mounts, what we do on the farm is at an evening, we set those to print. And that's actually what's on a lot of the build plates right now. It takes 10 hours, seven minutes to print those but we can take advantage of the time while humans are sleeping because these Prusa printers behind me can keep working. So here's what's really cool. Everything I just told you allows us to print quality control, package and ship 1000 XRP kits every three weeks in order to fill out that 10,000 kit order. 
and that's utilizing 50 allocated printers from the print farm, just 50. Also, this schedule is going to assume that no one is working crazy hours. We have the ability to work crazy hours if the job demands it, but with proper scheduling and proper prints, we can not have to work those crazy hours and we get quality parts packaged and shipped and sent off to the customer, and that's perfect. This also assumes no failures. Now these are 3D printers. Doesn't matter the brand you use, it doesn't matter the filament you use, there's always going to be failures that crop up. Sometimes we get failures where many machines don't print right. Or sometimes we will just get one part in a build plate of 25 that for some reason lifted or, or, or didn't print or something. And so we have to take that into consideration. But what's great about proper planning for a job, you build in the time to mitigate any problems that you see. And that's what we've built into this schedule. We're assuming good prints are done, but because our machines are properly maintained, we are able to very much guarantee that we're going to be printing more good parts than not, and we're gonna do it in a proper amount of time. And if for some reason something goes wrong, we have the time to fix it. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Well, I know that was a little data heavy, but I really think that that information is interesting because this sort of calculation is really easy to do for someone that has 50 machines or a thousand machines or perhaps one or two machines. As long as you set forth a, a, an efficient schedule, but allow yourself as a human time to eat and time to sleep, then you can get through any sized order you want at a high bar of quality and get it out to a customer that will be super duper satisfied. I really hope you enjoyed that little peek into how we schedule things on the print farm. And I'm really open to questions about this. And if you have any, leave them down below and I'll try to get to them. But you made it this far, thanks for doing that. If you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, print all the things 24 seven almost, and as always, High five.